First of all, the basics. You need to know these. It's like going into a store and not knowing how money works or how prices work. You're just going to get screwed. So first of all, the most important thing, the most common thing you're going to see is the money line. The money line price, what does that mean? Well, in fighter terms, it's whoever gets their hand raised. Whoever wins the fight, doesn't matter if they win by KO, by sub, by decision, by DQ. If they got their hand raised, the money line is going to cash for that fighter. If you're looking at other sports, it's just whoever wins. That's It's the most common bet you're going to see. It's the one that they flash. Uh, if you're watching the fights in particular, it's the number that they flash next to the fighter's name. If there's a minus next to it, that means they're the favorite. If it's a plus, that means they're the underdog. Next up is over-unders. Now, this is a very widespread thing. You can basically say it, set an over-under on anything. You could say over-under on how many drinks I'm going to have tonight. Set it at four and a half. What's the over? What's the under? If we're talking fights, this is the most common thing you're going to see within a fight is the over-under is going to be the amount of time elapsed within the fight. So they're going to say over-under two and a half rounds, which basically means you know five, minute, five minutes per round. 12 and a half minutes of that. So two and a half rounds equals 12 and a half minutes. They're going to set it at two and a half rounds, and then they're like, they're going to give you the odds. So maybe it's minus 150 for the over and plus 120 for the under. So they're going to adjust the odds based off of the amount of time that they set it at. So it's just a set amount of time, and you got to go off of that. Obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff that you could say over under for. They can adjust the amount of fight time, so they could say over under one and a half and then you just the odds would just get adjusted, so you'd get a, you know a worse price on the over and a better price on the under. Those are odds that we're going to talk about in the next chapter. So watch that one. Odds and probabilities. Let's talk about this because this is definitely the part where people start to get confused. It was confusing for me when I had to start, and I just you just got to battle through it. So listen to me, hear me out. I'll try to keep it very slow so you can understand this if you're having problems with it. If you're having problems, don't worry about it. It's, it's Once you get through it, you'll understand it. But basically, the odds is the number that you're going to see. So it's whether it's minus a number or plus a number. And that's basically the price you're going to pay. And that price is calculated off of a probability of that outcome happening. So if Vegas thinks a fighter has a 60% chance of winning this fight, they will set the line at minus 150 because that's how what the implied odds are and that's what the price they're going to allow you to pay. If we're looking at the prices, the negative number is going to be the more favored outcome. The plus number is going to be the less favored outcome. So the higher the probability of something happening, the higher the number in the minus is going to go. The lower the probability of something happening, the higher in the plus number is going to go. They move in opposite directions. Now, like I said, this is based off of probabilities. So if a fighter A has a 60% chance of winning, meaning they would win, Vegas thinks they'll win 6 out of 10 times, they're going to base the odds given to you off of that. So 6 out of 10 times is about minus 150. That's the price that you have to pay. Now, the price you pay is going to determine how much you get in return if your bet wins. If you want to win $100 off of a minus 150 bet, you have to put down $150 to return $100 back, get paid out the full 250 Let me repeat that. So you put $150 down to win $100 at minus 150 odds. Once that bet wins, they're going to give you the $100 that you won along with the $150 that you put in to win that $100. You'll be paid out $250. Now let's flip this around and say you want to make a bet at plus 150 odds. This is less likely to happen. Implied odds would be about 40%. For the sake to make it simple, let's just say you want to cash out the same plus 250. This case, you're taking on more risk. So you have to put down less to win the same amount. You only have to put down $100 instead of the 150 so you're putting down $100. If you win, they're going to pay you plus 150. So 100 times plus 150 is $150. You're going to get paid out the same 250, but you're only paying $100 in the first place. Hopefully that example made sense, but just know the higher the number at the plus money, the less likely it is to happen. The higher the number at the minus money, the more likely it is to happen. If you have that basic understanding, you can look at the odds and the probabilities 
and understand what you're getting yourself into. Now, I just taught you, when you're looking at odds, that there's going to be a minus number and a plus number, but there's not. that's not always the case. In some cases, with a sports book, there's going to be two minus numbers, and that is the case where they're giving both sides the same probability to win. So if you look at some sports books, in some cases, it's going to be minus 110 and minus 110 on both sides. You look at that and say, well, then they're both favored, but... It's really a 50-50 fight. The problem is you're playing with the house, and the house is always going to have an edge. It's basically your premium to play with them. And the problem with that is that you're paying the premium. If you don't want to pay the premium, then I have a solution for you, and this is a solution that has saved me hundreds of dollars. I'm not trying to sell you on it, but this is how you save money in the long term. Most sports books are going to charge you 10% for every winning. So if you put $100 down, they're going to charge you 10% off of your winnings. If you lose, you lost the money straight up. But they're going to charge you that 10%. In this case, on betopenly.com, there's no house. So you're not paying a house premium. You're paying your side of the bet, and somebody else is paying the other side of the bet. And at that point... The site only takes 1%. So you're saving 9% on every bet that you put down and every bet that you win. It's not sexy, but I'm telling you, trust me when I say this, you need to be using that because you will save money over the long term. It's basically like if you went to the store and every time you chose the store that charged you 9% more on every purchase instead of going to the store that's going to charge you 9% less. You have, to, you have to use that. That's the only way to save money in the long term in a market that you're already at a disadvantage at. So that's how you can beat the house edge. Just eliminate it. And in this case, use betopoly.com. If you go on there, sometimes you'll get plus 100, plus 100. That's basically just the same as a minus 110, minus 110, but you're paying less money. Betopoly.com. I'll put the link down in the description. Those are the basics to get you started. But before you go, I need you to understand this concept because I get this question so many times and I have to explain it over and over again. I need you guys to understand this because every time you ask it, I don't want to make this seem like I'm, I'm shitting on you, but every time I see this question asked, it, I just automatically know you're new to the sports betting. You don't know what's going on here. And that is the concept of asking for someone's record. Okay, how many plays have you won? How many plays have you lost? That doesn't matter. That, that In this game, picking winners is not what matters. Why? Because what I just explained to you, odds and probabilities. Look at this for an example. If you say, I went 3-1 and one today, that sounds great. You know, you're hitting at 75%, 3 out of 4, that's really good, right? But the problem with that is you could go 3-1 and one and still lose money. So do you really care that you went 3-1? and one? No, because you're losing money. The, the objective here is that you want to win money. So the record means nothing. Why? Because you could put four bets down at very high odds, win three out of four, but still lose money because you're not getting any return on the bets that you're winning. So you have to look at profit over record. Don't go off of a, uh, if someone went 10 and one, great. Did they win money? If someone went two and 10, great. Did they win money? Yes. Awesome. If they didn't win money, bad. Just go off the profit. The record really means nothing because we're betting prices here. We're not predicting outcomes. The only exception to that rule would be if every bet that you place is at the same odds. And really the only way that I could look at this and say, yeah, every bet is at the same odds is if you're looking at like player props. So when I give out my record and say it's 27 and four or 27 and seven, that's a good record because those props that you're placing they're all at the same odds. You're not paying different prices at those odds. They're all around 100 minus 120. They're all around the same price. So once those odds are around the same, then you can look at a record. But in most cases, you're not betting the same amount of odds on every play, unless it's props. Thank you guys for watching. That is the basics that you need to know for MMA sports betting. That's what I tailored it to. Why? Because that's most of my audience. And a lot of you guys ask those questions. So those are the answers. If you have any more questions, drop them down in the comments. I will do my best to give you guys the information that you need. Hey, Jive Picks here. Drop a sub to support the channel. Follow me on all the social medias. Click the links below to get in on the Jive gang. 
Appreciate all the support. I'll keep bringing more videos to you guys. Till next time, Hey Jive Picks, signing out.